Hello, my beautiful Aquarian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2020. Where Aquarius, this month, we've got a full moon happening in your sign. We've got a new moon happening in the other sign. So relationships are definitely on some highlight this month. And as we end the month, I'm going to tell you, end of August, heading into September, Aquarius, it's going to be time to purge, detox, get rid of some things on a spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, psychological level that are not serving you. But let's get through the beginning of the month first. All right, so we've also got the eat and greets happening this month, you guys, and they are just what a joy to bring those to you. I hope that you are enjoying them. I hope you're enjoying the astrologers who are coming over and sharing their knowledge with us. This month, we will welcome Glenn Mitchell. We'll have Kay Taylor, Kathy Rose, Susan Miller from the Astrology Zone will be here. Laura Nalbandian from Norwalk. We'll have Clarissa Dolphin who does vibrational astrology. I mean, it's a really action-packed kind of month with the friends that are coming over to teach and talk. As well, I'll be a part of the Astrology Summit for for passion and purpose coming up August 7th through the 9th. You can sign up for it. It is free. It is free, which is in the budget, right? So you can sign up for that in the um, description box down below. And I hope you come over there. 17 different astrologers showing up, talking about astrology, creating community, creating the tribe. I mean, just a beautiful time. So I hope that you will come over, sign up and join us. All right, let's talk about what's happening this month, though. So we kick off this month on the 3rd with a full moon happening in your sign. So the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. It sheds a whole bunch of light, like so much light, more than we can see. So sometimes something's been right back here, and it's been just right back here, and you haven't been able to see it. And as the light gets to shine in, it's so much light that you can see everything around you, and then you're able to have it right in front of your face. Now, the full moon being in your sign is in the first house, right? It's about you, what you're doing, how you're showing up, how your identity is leading into the room before you get there, right? Some reputation gets loaded into here as well. Now, in your sign, the other thing I think of at this full moon is where you're one of our most unconventional signs, right? But for you, Where do you need to take some unconventional behavior in order to be successful? And this isn't just about Aquarius is all wild and weird and pull it in, you know what I mean? But look at your behaviors, your behavior patterns of success, especially in your relationships and in your work life. And where do you need to make an adjustment and try something that is a little unconventional for your behavior pattern in order to allow that to equal some success? I think it's a beautiful and Energy. The other thing I think of, just because you're a natural um, grouping together kind of energy, a friendly energy, is where are you showing up with your friends? Man, we have been in a state of social distancing. Are you virtualed out? Do you need to figure out how to create tribe, maybe see people, maybe connect at that level? This is a great moon to shed some light on what you need and how you're showing up to meet those needs. On the fifth, we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Leo right across the street in the seventh house, right? So relationships. Now, Mercury and Leo is fire in the mouth. So this may be an energy where there's a lot of conversation happening in your relationships, not just romantic relationships, conscious chosen relationships. This could even be your relationships with open enemies. You know you guys have an issue. Conflict is an area in the seventh house that we deal with as well. With Mercury being here, you are speaking up. You are expressing yourself. There is high expression coming your way or coming from you in your relationship zone. Now, one of the things that I like about this is having this full moon happen in your sign, and then we get Mercury rolling over into your other sign. You really get to take a look at the me and we balance this month that's happening in your relationships, in your contracts, in your give and take placements this month. On the seventh, Venus is going to move into the energy of Cancer, lighting up the sixth house space. Now, Venus says, stop working so hard. Let it come to you. She's trying to bless and give benefit to this area. So in the area of your daily routine of your home or your daily routine of even a practice or a health or a mental health practice you've got, I feel like Venus really adds a lot of blessing here, but also in a very mundane kind of way, she's going to help you with projects. 
Maybe you're a freelance person. Venus is like, cool, we can continue to work from home and do our own thing. And I'm going to actually bless this with good relationships. I'm going to bless this area with some financial abundance. So whatever it is, Venus is showing up in your sixth house to say, I want to bring you some benefit. Now, what you do have to remember when Venus comes into the health house is that you can be a little snacky. And I know all about that. I got true Taurus blood in me, true Venetian blood running through these veins. You can find yourself wanting to eat a little bit more. You want to take a little bit more pleasure in your daily routines. And as long as you work it out and work it off, I say, be good to yourself. Take care of your body. Take care of your digestive system this month as well, okay? On the 15th, we say Uranus taking a retrograde in the energy of Taurus. Now, this is going to light up your fourth house space. So one of the things, Uranus is your ruling planet. So you are pretty tapped into this energy. Taurus is another fixed energy. You guys like to get good and grounded down into what you're doing, right? So it's like, oh, it's fine. I haven't died. I can keep doing this. And that is not always the answer, my fixed friend friends, right? So something that may need to happen here, Aquarius, is as Uranus is retrograding here, he's looking at your home life. He's looking at your physical home. He's looking at relationships with your parents. And he's also looking at your emotional and psychological foundation and saying, where do we need to let something go in order to have freedom? What do you need to let go of to be financially free? What behaviors need to show up in your material life in order for you to have relationship freedom, financial freedom, housing freedom? The, the question here is where do you need to get out of the rut to have freedom? On the 19th, we're going to have that new moon happening in the energy of Leo. So you're planting your seeds of intention here for what you'd like to have in your relationships. Do you feel like at this point in the year, you've got good, healthy, sexy relationships? Do you feel like relationships are just a struggle? Whatever it is, even if they're so good that you're like, this is so delicious. I'm so happy we're in a relationship together. Whatever it is, plant your seeds of intention to be a leader in your relationships. And that doesn't mean you're always in charge and dominant, but it means where can you really lead in your relationships, in your business relationships? When you walk through the doors of work in the morning or virtually walk through the doors, right? Are you showing up as a leader? Are you giving us action and are you giving us Leo energy that says I'm a leader and I'm here to self-confidently generously serve this organization, serve this relationship, serve this higher power, whatever that looks like for you. Are you being this brilliant leader? Because you, you can pack those seeds of intention down into this new moon. On the 20th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Virgo. And on the 20th, we see the sun moving into the energy of Virgo. So Virgo is the business. Now in the eighth house, this is why I tell you Aquarius, I think as we end this month and we get ready to move towards September, it's really about a purge. It is a purge. It is a detox. It is a let's pay down this debt. It is a let's get rid of what's not working for us here in Virgo as the natural healer of the Zodiac is going to show you, is going to help you get into the details of what's not the highest integrity here. But she's also going to help you celebrate the things you're really doing well. Your analytical mind meets your motivation of that sun in this particular energy. You could be motivated to collaborate with people, have a joining of some variety. You know, your partner's money, your partner's happenings could really be getting a kick at this time as well. But whatever it is, Virgo is seeking to organize or reorganize and definitely get into the details here. So you've got 30 days of this beautiful sun in Virgo energy to help you get organized and get into the details of work. So don't miss out on using it to your greatest good, okay? All right, my beautiful Aquarians, I think it's going to be a good month. I mean, you're having a full moon in your sign. You're getting a new moon in your relationships. That is not a bad coin to flip at all. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you. I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets, and I'll see you next month. Bye.